Buenas tardes, estamos el día de hoy con Dan Price. Dan, es un gusto tenerte con nosotros. Nice to meet you. Nice how, to meet you. you. I'm very happy to be here in Peru. I'm happy to be talking to you. Wow. You are on Machu Picchu. Yes, it was a beautiful experience, something yeah? I've always wanted to visit. And you have a beautiful country, so I'm really happy to be here. Qué lindo, qué yeah, lindo. Yeah. Bueno, Dan, hoy día quisiera hablar un poco del paralelo entre your company, Gravity, between soft skills, la importancia de las competencias blandas, de liderazgo, con cómo tú lo ejerces en tu compañía cómo tú lo haces y sobre todo tomar esta decisión tan importante que tú tomaste en el 2015 de aumentar el sueldo progresivamente a tus colaboradores desde, desde el 2015 hasta el 2017 con 10 mil dólares por año, por año, ¿ok? Eh, Willy, si puedes traducirle para yeah, las personas. Eh, she's, um, she's asking you to talk about a little bit about leadership and also the uh, moment uh, when you made the decision to cut down your salary a little bit and increase your employees' salaries in 2015. Yeah, so, I mean, for me, I think what we need more uh, for leadership is to really consider, you know, uh, I think right now the model that a lot of people have for leadership is to consider the wealthy people, to consider the ownership of the company, the company as a whole. Um, yeah, eh, Dan nos está contando que eh, para él es importante cambiar este modelo de, de liderazgo donde actualmente se piensa mucho en una compañía sobre la gente de arriba, los poderosos, ¿no? But I think that the, the new model of leadership that we need is really actually considering everybody and finding a way to include more people in the success that we have as a company, as a country, as a society, as a world, because I think that the gap between the people that are receiving the benefits of our success as humans and the people who are not is becoming way too great. So I think true leadership is more about lifting up and including more people in the success we're experiencing and not having it be all for the wealthy people, the people with the money and the power. Nice. Y Dan también nos está explicando que es muy importante ahora cambiar este modelo de liderazgo y eh, a lo, que, lo que se hacía antiguamente y más bien ahora el, el reto de, de estas épocas es cómo incluir a todas, a la mayor cantidad de personas para que tengan éxito no solamente los que están arriba en los grupos de poderes sino también todos los, toda la cadena de, de, de empleados hasta el último ¿no? es, es el nuevo reto Gracias. So that's, that's all very philosophical but For me, um, I was on a hike one day with my friend Valerie, and she was explaining to me how her rent was being increased, and she could no longer afford to live. And I was very angry, I was very upset about it. <laughs> wow. uh, y este, eh, también nos comentaba sobre una experiencia anecdótica de él, cuando, cuando eh, an, eh, antes de tomar estas decisiones en su compañía, él se encontraba caminando en, eh, con su amiga Valir en una caminata y su amiga le explicaba sobre cómo eh, le era muy difícil a ella para poder pagar su renta y mantener su, su, su situación económica. So then after I was so upset, I realized yeah. that the company that I was running, you know, a third of the people at that company, at, at Gravity, at my company, were making less than what Valerie was making. So to me, uh, it was, it was uh, hypocritical. It became important. It became an imperative for me that... I find a way to run my company in a way that wouldn't be causing the same problem that I was upset about. And so on this hike with Valerie, I decided to take a, a million dollar pay cut and raise the minimum wage for everyone at my company to $70,000 a yeah, year I know, I know. and then uh, implemented it about a month after that hike that I went on with Valerie. The decision was so important. Yeah. yeah. It, it, I think it was important <laughs> and I think that, um, you know, The, the effects of the decision have been really uh, monumental and amazing for yeah, us. Yeah, however, I know that, that you had problems with your decision, yeah? Yeah, so we did have um, uh, a couple employees quit that, were, uh, that didn't agree with it, that mm -hmm. felt like the, the status quo, the way that uh, things had been done before was better. Um, but, you know, I think back to it and uh, Prior to the decision, we were having between zero and two babies being born amongst the employees per year. 
Okay. And then since then, we're ha we've had 20 babies. The savings rate of people working at the company has tripled. People are saving money, they're getting out of debt, and also people are able to afford to buy homes in the city, which is a very difficult thing. I'm sure it's very difficult for workers here in Lima as well to buy a, to buy a home. Mm -hmm. And so implementing those changes has allowed our community and our lives to be so much better compared to me just having too much money in my <laughs> bank account that I don't know what to do yeah. with. <laughs> Willy, por favor. Sí, eh, en la primera parte Dan nos comentaba sobre eh, que cuando su amiga Valerie le, le, le comentó esta, este, este problema que él tenía, él, él se, se sintió como que eh, algo llegó a, a su mente y fue la idea de que se dio cuenta de que el, el, un tercio de los empleados en su compañía tenían una cantidad menor de sueldo que, que, la, que su compañera, su amiga Valerie. Entonces él dijo... Y como él se sentía preocupado y un poco molesto por, lo, por la situación de su amiga, él, él pensó y dijo, si, si yo no tengo a mis empleados de una, con una mejor, mejores beneficios, eh, sería un poco hipócrita que, que yo me sienta preocupado por mi amiga y no preocupado por la situación de mis empleados. Entonces fue, ese fue el momento en que él decidió reducir su sueldo eh, eh, y aumentar los sueldos de sus empleados ¿no? en 70 mil dólares por año. Eh, fue un cambio gradual. Y en la segunda parte, Dan nos comentaba que, que este ha sido un cambio monumental, ¿no? eh, ha sido algo, algo increíble para, para los, las personas que trabajan para él, porque, por ejemplo, en, en una nota un poco anecdótica y divertida, eh, por ejemplo, antes, antes de esto, este... Eh, el, 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 como se dice, el, el número de niños que nacían en, en sus empleados era mínimo <risa> y después este, la gente empezaba a tener más niños y también, también nos comentaba que, que mucha gente podía este, ahorrar más dinero, pagar sus deudas e inclusive muchos de sus empleados podían comprar casas en la ciudad, cosa que es muy difícil y, y eso, entonces el cambio ha sido muy positivo ¿no? y obviamente también comentaba Dan que habían algunas personas que no habían estado de acuerdo y habían renunciado a la Así compañía es. pero de todas maneras sobre todo la, la, la cosa positiva es mayor ¿no? a estas cosas gracias, pequeñas gracias Willy Dan, tell me ¿qué es el éxito para ti? ¿qué es el éxito para ti? I mean, el éxito para mí es hacer lo correcto y disfrutando y Uh, I don't have some big goal, you know, never say never, but I don't have some big goal to like sell my company or, or be a billionaire. A lot of people don't know this, but I'm the same age as Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so I decided very early on that I was not going to be in some kind of competition to just try to make the most money possible, but I was going to do things that I felt like were right that would bring me satis satisfaction and, and fulfillment. And so that's really what I'm trying to do is just follow my own conscience and, and try to learn and, and do the right thing and, and really try to enjoy it. Um, I read that you, you said that the people, when earns a lot of money, they have a lot of problems. Yeah. Is that, is that, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, so uh, there was a study in 2010 in the United States by, uh, by Princeton University. And the study showed that once you make $75,000 per family, when you go above that, the happiness doesn't really go This up at all. This is an article, isn't it? It was, a, it was an academic study by uh, two Nobel laureates, so two of the, 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 most, you know, the, the most qualified scientific researchers mm -hmm. in the world, basically proved that, yeah, the more money you make, the happier, mm -hmm. you, happier you are until you have enough to meet all your basic needs and then money can't bring you happiness anymore. And I think that that is part of what's creating the con confusion because we learn the more money I make the better off I'll be, which is true until you get to a certain place where you have enough mm -hmm. and then chasing more money after that won't make you happy anymore. Wow. Unbelievable. Sí. Uh, en, la, en la primera parte cuando le preguntabas a Dan sobre el éxito, eh, Dan nos comentaba que para él el éxito es simplemente hacer lo que es correcto eh, y, y eso es parte de su filosofía de él, de tratar de ayudar a, a la mayor cantidad de personas que se pueda, ¿no? como lo he explicado antes en su, en su manera de manejar su compañía y, y mejorar el nivel de vida de todos sus empleados, no solamente de los arriba sino de todos los 
hasta los de abajo. Y en la segunda parte, eh, cuando tú le preguntabas sobre... Que la gente que más dinero gana oh, tiene más yeah. problemas. Sí, gracias. Es mucha información, <risa> mucha información. Cuando le preguntaba sobre, sobre la gente que, 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 que gana más dinero, este, bueno, en esta parte es interesante y sería una reflexión para todas aquellas personas que a veces estamos pensando que más dinero, quiero más dinero, quiero más dinero. Exacto. Porque Dan nos hablaba de un estudio en Princeton. Así es. Right, en Princeton, que... Eh, en el cual se, se estudió a muchas personas eh, que tenían, eh, de, dependiendo de lo que ganaban, y, y se demostró que cuando uno llega a, a una cifra que creo que es 75 mil dólares por Ajá, año, este, en realidad el, el, nivel, el nivel de felicidad no aumenta. Es. ¿no? Entonces es como, que, es como que el dinero sí te puede hacer sentir mejor hasta cierto límite donde ya cubre tus necesidades, pero luego de eso ya no, ya no es más. Y por eso es que Dan hace un rato también comentaba que, que, por ejemplo, él, 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 él es feliz compartiendo su dinero, porque ¿para qué quiere más dinero en el banco? Porque es dinero que ni siquiera sabría qué hacer con él. Muy lindo punto, Willy. Y me hace pensar en algo. ¿Cómo tú motivas a tus empleados? Si usualmente se dice que en las empresas, cuando tú les aumentas el sueldo, los empleados están felices por two or three months. And then, eh, bueno, ahora ya no quiero plata, ahora quiero irme más temprano, ahora quiero... Eh, que my scale sea más flexible, ¿ok? Eh, algo así. O sea, ¿de qué manera motivas a tu gente y la tienes comprometida con tu visión? Cuéntame, por favor. Oh, yeah. Uh, and she's asking you about, uh, about this. How do you keep your employees motivated? Because she says that basically when, 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 when people get a raise, yeah, it's like you're happy for two, three months, and then it's like, okay, it doesn't make much of, much of difference. Yeah. Uh, but maybe I want more things like a flexible schedule or, or leave, leave work earlier. So I'll, t I'll say two things about that. Um, number one, motivation, true motivation comes from the inside. Intrínseca. Yeah, yes. intrinsic motivation. Do you want to translate and then I'll continue? Yeah. <laughs> eh, Dan nos explica que el primer punto es que la motivación viene desde adentro. La motivación yes. intrínseca. And specifically to increase intrinsic motivation, We focus on autonomy, giving people the right to make their own decisions and how they do things. Mastery, giving them a path where they can learn to do better. And then having a purpose that really matters, which for us is, again, sticking up for the little gal or guy. Um, el primer punto... Autonomy. Um, ah, la otra, thank you. La <laughs> autonomía, <laughs> que significa dejar a los empleados que tomen sus decisiones, darles esa libertad. The second. Mastery. <laughs> Ah, yeah, mastery. Eh, darles el camino para que ellos puedan seguir aprendiendo y creciendo. And, and purpose for us sticking up for the little gal or guy. Y el tercero es darles a todos sus empleados un propósito. El propósito es trabajar por todos, ¿no? Por aquella persona que es la más pequeña en la empresa. But, but the larger point I would like to make is that we're too focused on motivation. And that motivation is not what, where we should be focused on. People are already motivated. We need to provide them with the tools and also the authority to exercise that motivation. And so when they're making enough money, they don't have all the distractions. So that gives them the, the tools. And then also it, they feel a stronger sense of confidence, which gives them the responsibility, the authority to exercise the motivation they already have. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, it's okay. It's le le less about focus, less on motivation uh -huh. and more on the tools that we give people, and also the authority, the responsibility that we give them to make decisions. Oh ah, yeah, thank you. Ah, I, I get everything. It's just that I'm a little nervous. <laughs> no. Worries. Okay. Um, Dan nos está contando que no son, más importante que, que enfocarnos en la motivación, porque la motivación ya está ahí, es en proveerle a los empleados las herramientas para que tengan ellos esta confianza y que sientan que les damos autonomía para que ellos puedan tomar sus propias decisiones y ser responsables de las decisiones. O sea, que empower. I, yes, I wrote an article on my on my blog on LinkedIn on social media where I said, let's stop trying to motivate people. We don't need to manipulate people. People yeah. are already motivated. Eh, Dan ha escrito un artículo donde menciona que debemos dejar de tratar de motivar a la gente debemos, porque a veces esa motivación puede ser manipuladora, mm -hmm. sino más bien eh, lo que mencionó antes, ¿no? Lo de, dejar, de darles esa autonomía 
esa confianza de que tomen sus decisiones. I do think the way we're treating employees though is demotivating. So instead of focus on motivating people, manipulating people, let's stop taking power away from them, which takes away their motivation. Let's take away power from them? What do you mean by that? Meaning we're, what, the, what, what society, what most companies are doing, they're taking away power from employees, uh, okay, which mm -hmm. ends up making them feel powerless, mm -hmm. and then their motivation goes down. People are already motivated. We don't need to motivate them more. We need to stop taking their motivation away. Got it. Ok, lo que Dan nos está comentando, que es un aspecto muy interesante, me parece, mm -hmm. es eh, la idea de que... Eh, no, neces no necesariamente darles más motivación a los empleados, sino eh, no quitarles el poder de decisión. Porque cuando les quitas el poder de decisión, entonces es cuando ellos se sienten... Mami, eso es lo que baja la motivación, quitarle a los empleados su poder de decisión. Sino darles esa libertad que tengan de poder decidir ellos mismos. Muy bien. I, I was giving a speech one time to 3,000 business owners and executives. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, who's motivated? Who wants to change the world? Everyone raised their hand. And I said, but what about your employees? They're like, no, they don't want to. So I said, okay, so everyone in this room's motivated, but as soon as you leave this room, you're not motivated, right? That's not true. We're tricking ourselves. We're lying to ourselves. And the, the truth is that we as leaders are failing the people that are following us, and we have to do a better job of, of giving them a better path to... to to build their own motivation rather than us trying to build it. Exacto. Oh, yeah. Qué importante. Okay, Dan nos estaba comentando una vez que él estaba dando un discurso a un grupo de, de empresarios, ¿no? Y, y decía, ¿quiénes quieren cambiar el mundo? Y todo el mundo levanta la mano, ¿no? Yo, oh, yo. Y digo, ok, ¿quiénes quieren apoyar y cambiar a sus empleados? Oh, nadie. Entonces él les contesta, bueno, cuando ustedes salgan de, este, de, de esta habitación, entonces van a perder toda su motivación. Eh, lo que una, una vez más Dan nos refuerza esta idea de, de que como los líderes estamos fallando en este, en este aspecto, ¿no? de que no, eh, no damos eh, libertad a nuestros empleados, ¿no? entonces eh, 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 es lo que tú comentas, ¿no? el empowerment, ¿no? entonces es, y, y yo diría que es algo de confianza también, ¿no? confiar en tus empleados y darles ese poder de tomar sus propias decisiones. Thank you, gracias. Dan, tell me about, what do you think about soft skills? Well, um, Is, uh, they are more important than hard skill? They're both important. Exactly. 50%, 50%. I, I would say 100%, 100%. But maybe my math is not so good in that. But I think that, you know, it's really necessary. However, we have to recognize that people have different um, approaches and different comfortabilities. So, for example, you know, There are certain people that are maybe less comfortable communicating and, and speaking in public or maybe less comfort, comfortable with confrontation. And so we, we have to, as companies, find ways to be more inclusive of people that have uh, more diversity of soft skills as compared to the same soft skills. Ah, ya. Yeah. Eh, eh, cuando Roxana le, pregun te, le preguntabas a Dan sobre, sobre las competencias blandas y las competencias duras, sí que era más importante. Y decías, tú decías que era un 50-50 y Dan bromea diciendo que es un 100-100. <risa> y que de repente, bueno, es una, es una matemática media extraña, pero bueno, <risa> eh, pero es, es válido el concepto. Eh, y él nos explicaba que tenemos que ser también inclusivos, ¿no? Porque no todas las personas tienen los mismos las mismas competencias o habilidades no hay personas que les gusta hablar en público otras personas les gusta trabajar de repente en una oficina yeah. <ríe> yeah. entonces este él tiene que cambiar todo a una manera más inclusiva y, y no y respetar estas diferencias entre todas las personas que trabajan en una compañía Ok, and finally Dan ya porque hoy día Dan está volando así que bueno no les explico hoy día regresa a su país Dan tell me eh, tus empleados te regalaron un Tesla, un Tesla, ah, ah, este, ah, ah, un auto, wow. I, I, I love cars, soy amante de los carros. Y cuando, when I read about it, Tesla, oh my God, no. Tell me, how do you feel? Oh, I, I still get goosebumps about it, uh, you know, like, I just, um, I, I can't believe it, I mean, it's just, unbelievable and, and so for those of you that don't know um, the
the, the people I work with, they all saved up for six months and bought me my dream car, which I probably would have never In gotten. In front of your company. Yeah. I saw the picture. Yeah, and uh, it was it was really an incredible experience because every time I get in my car now, I just feel this sense of you know love and connection to the team, and uh, and that was a really special thing. And it's a great car. Too. You were not expecting that, I guess. No, it was a big big <laughs> shock for me. Big shock, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh, I still I still don't quite believe it. To be honest, <laughs> maybe it's a dream. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that. I don't know. <laughs> it seems like that. It seems like that. Okay, uh, and, and I think it's recognition from your employees, huh? Thank you. And it's something. I mean, it's something great because it, it's like you are not. Um, you 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 just did the right thing without expecting anything, and then one day you receive recognition from <laughs> from other people. <laughs> Ya, eh, bueno, en este en esta parte Rosana estábamos comentando, bueno, Rosana, tú nos comentabas de, de cuando los empleados le habían regalado a, a Dan Tesla, un Tesla. Azul. I mean, how, how much is that car? I mean, it's like a lot of money. 70 mil dólares. I don't know. Okay, la, como 70 mil dólares un carro. <laughs> y, y todos that, aquí yeah. comentábamos con Dan, bueno, pues yeah. que es algo increíble, se siente muy agradecido y sorprendido oh, yeah. y que todavía no lo puede creer y bueno, este... Y, y, y yo le comentaba a Dan que también pues creo que es, una, es, un, es un reconocimiento, ¿no? Y, y creo que es algo muy importante, ¿no? Yo le comentaba, le comentaba a Dan, bueno, ¿no? Comentábamos aquí que a veces un, uno hace las cosas, las cosas bien y, y si, simplemente no esperas nada, pero a veces eso, eso se te retribuye, ¿no? Y, y, y de pronto la gente te reconoce algo bueno que has hecho. And uh, I don't have to pay for gas anymore. <laughs> you, you don't have to what? It's electric. So oh, it's electric. Yeah, it's electric. You, no, I don't have to pay for gas. That's the environment. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Es un carro eléctrico y ayuda el medio ambiente. Medio ambiente. Yeah. yeah. I also want to say thank you so much for sitting down with me, uh, Professor. And, no, and, thank you. And uh, <laughs> thank I, you I would love, uh, hopefully, to come back and visit your class or visit yes, your yes. university someday. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everybody that I've met here in Peru because it's just such a wonderful country. It's always been one of the places that I most wanted to visit. I mean, such an incredible culture and, and society and, you know, also your food <laughs> yeah. is incredible. Our food is amazing. But what's, what, the only thing better than the food and the landscape and the beauty and Machu Picchu and all these national treasures is the people what here. What is your favorite plate? Uh, here. I, I've oh. been eating quinoa my whole life, so anything with quinoa, I love. <laughs> I love quinoa. But what I want to say is, um, just to the people here that have welcomed me, thank you so much. Um, I spent uh, six days in Cusco mm -hmm. and uh, two days here in Lima. I'm, I'm leaving this tonight, so I'm very sad. I have to go home. I have meetings and stuff I have to get back to. But I would love to connect with any of your students and. Uh, You know, I'm on uh, Instagram and Facebook if wow. anyone are on those, and you can feel free to follow me on there um, mm -hmm. for personal. And then if you're more interested in what I'm writing professionally, um, I'm on a site called LinkedIn, which is like a professional networking site mm -hmm. where I do a lot of different writing. And, uh, and I would love to meet and connect with some of your students. And the more connections that I make here in Peru, the more I can come back and hopefully continue to have a relationship with, with people here. But it's really amazing to meet you. <laughs> We've been connected, I think, online for probably yeah, three, three years now. And yeah. so it's really nice to finally meet you in person. <laughs> and I'd love yeah. to have the, the same experience with your students and other people from mm. the university. So. It's a pleasure for me. Thank yeah. you, Dan. Really, really. Okay, um, oh, and on, so on Instagram. Instagram. Dan Price Seattle. Yeah. Dan Price Seattle. Yep. Okay. And then Facebook, Facebook the same, oh. Dan Price Seattle. Dan Price And on Seattle. LinkedIn, Dan LinkedIn. Price LinkedIn. Seattle. Oh, the three are the same. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So if people want to connect with me on a personal level, Instagram's probably the best. And if people want to connect on a professional level, ah, yeah. then LinkedIn's the best. Profesional, para el, para el, para el nivel profesional, en LinkedIn es mejor. Yes. Y para el nivel personal, ¿no? Pues eh, en Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. En todas las redes sociales. Yeah. Bueno, estamos If you want to see video. pictures of me at Machu Picchu, <laughs> I don't put those on LinkedIn, I only put them on Instagram. Nadie quiere que vea sus fotos en Machu Picchu. Y está muy agradecido, ¿no? Yeah. Con todas las personas Así que. Es. Más allá de, más allá de todo lo, lo que ha conocido en Perú, le está agradecido por la gente. Ok, ok. Thank Con gusto. you. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Encantada. Thank you.